Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bedpost Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Erin Pym. Today at the podcast, I have a very special guest. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, what, what I usually do here is uh, bring guests from the Bedpost stage show that I run here in Toronto into mm-hmm. the studio to have a more in-depth conversation about sex and sexuality. And that is very much the case today. <laughs> this is a guest whom I love. Oh. I'm touching her hand right now. Yeah, we're touching and we're, we're like rubbing thumbs and fingers. <laughs> like yeah. that special like... This isn't just us holding hands. This is us (laughs) communicating something. Not spoken with words. <laughs> you have done, this lovely guest has done the podcast Hi. a bunch and yeah, done the bunch. stage show yeah. a bunch. A bunch. This is Leah Laronowitz, phone sex operator, writer, and newbie, newborn podcaster. I'm like a calf. <laughs> I'm still stumbling around with afterbirth. You're a, you're a wet. <laughs> I'm totally wet. Wobbly. Wobbly. The wobbly need. My eyes are still clouded over. <laughs> You know, that's funny because I just listened to your podcast. Where we're talking about bestiality, so that's oh my it's god, very fresh. It's all very fresh it for me. It'll stay with you forever. But let's <laughs> save. Let's save. Maybe talking about your new podcast sure. until the second half. That's fine. First, let's. I feel like we got to mention this phone sex operator thing. <laughs> yeah, it's not. If we don't discuss it, I mean, it's just like it's it's an oversight. <laughs> it's a tragic oversight. It really is. Yeah, it is. It is. You are a phone sex operator. It's 2018, <laughs> and you are a phone sex operator. I know. I feel like that needs to be brought up, that it's like it is 2018. This job exists. It's still here. Yeah. And it's not just clinging on for dear life. It's a it's a job. It's a vibrant. It's a vibrant (laughs) industry. Industry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's a real happening, vibrant industry. If you want to get out there and be a real career woman, you know, get on there. How long have you been doing phone sex work? (laughs) Um, off and on almost seven years. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. yeah. So So, at least for that long, it's still been been going. I didn't know know that it was a thing you could do until like seven years ago. I was like, I needed a job. And I, um, I watched Spike Lee's movie Girl 6, which is from the 90s and has a Prince soundtrack. And it's all about a phone sex operator. Yep. And how it ruins her life. But then I was like, that's a job for me. I want my life ruined. Yeah, but to a Prince soundtrack. <laughs> to a Prince soundtrack. Yeah, 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 yeah. And but it obviously has not ruined your life. You enjoy no, it. I love it. You do it. You've yeah, been doing I mean, it a long I'm not, time. I'm not going to do it forever. Like, I'm not going to be 80 and, like, trying to pick up the phone and being like, hello. Like, you don't I, think so? You know what? You never know at this point. Like, I mean, you know, I always say like, oh, I won't do it forever. But like, it wouldn't surprise me that much if I'm still like picking up a shift here or there when I'm yeah. like at the old folk home. Because there's probably a niche for for the older women, for a mature. There can be. Yeah. yeah, there there are. There are. If you're old as shit, you're going to get a lot of calls. Yeah, because who who um <laughs> who calls phone sex lines? Oh, everybody. Gen- everybody. 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 Like everybody in the world. I mean, you do get your like very, very very cliched, like mouth breather, gross, fat, unlucky, like Unabomber types. Oh, no. You get everything. You get yeah. you get like um, total creeps, total mm. losers and weirdos. And then you get uh, lots of people who are just like they have bizarre things that they can't share with anybody else. And a lot of it's not that bizarre. It's just like I like things in my butt. OK. And yeah, I can't right. tell my wife because she'll leave me. Because she'll think I'm gay. That's, that's a really, that's, sad, that's really, really, and it's like that's prevalent. And what I always say is, have you told her? Yeah. Like, have you even tried to broach the yeah, topic? Give her a chance. Yeah, I was like, when you're drunk, have you ever just been like, hey? And, hey, what and, would you and, think? And they if always I... say no. And I'm always like, did you even try? No. And it's like, well, then you just made this assumption for 20 years that she would never accept the real you. And maybe she would love to do that for you. I'm like, here's the thing. And you don't got to be on the phone with me talking (laughs) about it. (laughs) And so, and people call me and they're like, I'm in a closet and I can't talk loud. And it's like, yeah, people call from basements. From literal, inside literal closets. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, will you stick something in my butt? I'm on my lunch break. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like, that will you tell me? Will you weave a narrative for yes. me yes. Uh, about you sticking something in yeah, my butt? I get tons of messages where, like, guys will go, "I can't talk, but I'm going to call you, and I just want you to yell at me or something, or I just want you to talk to me." And I hate those calls because mm. you don't know if they're having a good time. You don't even really know if they're still there. Like, it's just nothing. And like to talk dirty to the void, to nothing, is <laughs> to like, the void, to the void. Like, oh yeah, like it just. I hate it. I hate it. Like I run out of steam so fast. And I just get angry and end up going, are you still there? Do you even like this? Are you even jerking off? Why are you such a pansy? You know, like, 
<laughs> I just get mad about it. It's better it's, when you, when you've got the conversation. Yeah, going because I don't know what you like. I'm not a mind reader. Yeah, nobody is. I've never met you. <laughs> and I've probably never talked to you before. No, I don't know you. I don't know where you are. I, I'm assuming you're horny, but that gives me nothing. Yeah. Like, I don't know what you like. I don't know if I'm going to do something that suddenly you're like, oh, no, I'm not into that at all. Yeah. Or like, can you do this? It's like, but I, that, that said, you do have regulars. You I have do tons have people that, yeah, yeah. I have tons of regulars. I have, <laughs> my regulars are always, they're always special people. Um, <laughs> they're. <laughs> I have one regular who is a guy who, this is the funniest story, he uh, used to, in college, he had a tennis scholarship. Wow. So he was supposed to be, like, Andre Agassi, didn't happen. Um, So he had a tennis scholarship, and he was living on the dorm of some, you know, uh, university where they have, like, the the sports scholarship people all in one dorm, which sounds like the beginning of, like, a really long gay porno. (laughs) Yeah. And it kind of is. It's like, it's like all the jocks on the floor, they're, like, getting to know each other. And there was this hockey player who, him, they became friends. Okay. um, And then... uh, (laughs) <laughs> the tennis guy started sucking the hockey player's dick. Obviously. Four times a week for four years straight. Wow. Four and times a week? Yeah. That's a that's yeah. a full time job. It's a training. It's a, <laughs> like a training session. Like he got more he learned more about dick sucking than he ever learned about like tennis or whatever the fuck he was studying. <laughs> Sounds like it, yeah. yeah. So he sucked this guy's dick and the guy was mean. Like he was really mean. Like he'd be like, get in here. And then he, like like they didn't have conversations. Yeah. Like the guy was just like really mean. And he loved it. And since then, he has not sucked a dick. He has been with women. He's in his 40s. And he's but just like. But those four years. Those four years. He did nothing but. An indelible <laughs> mark on him. And he is like, he won't stop talking about it. He won't stop jerking off about it. He's like, what should I do? So I, I would talk to him on the regular, David. Hmm. And then he's from Miami. And he's like a really smart, like fun guy. Um, and can be made fun of a lot which is essential for this sort of situation because if he was taking it way too seriously, it would be like, come on, mm-hmm. come on. You sucked a hockey player. And then the guy went on to become a famous NHL player. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, you did him a service. I did, I did. I did. <laughs> you, Serious you, you service. Game. And then the guy got like kicked out of the NHL for some nefarious reason. I'm not sure what. <laughs> Dick sucking. Dick sucking. <laughs> And yeah, so lewd he's like, behavior he for sure. Yeah, something awful, something <laughs> sure. awful, like something, something like just sheer shame. And he's probably like in some like industrial town drinking himself to death. Yeah, like and just in like sitting there and like being like, I remember when that guy used to suck my dick. Um, and his <laughs> at least days. he has those memories. At least he has that. So David wouldn't stop talking about it. And yeah. then he, I'm like, well, why don't you go out and suck another dick? Yeah, I'm like, get 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 on it, get yeah. on it. You're not getting younger, David. Yeah, and it's something that you're thinking about on pretty consistent basis yeah, all the so, time. All so the time. yeah don't just tell, tell, tell me about it yeah get out there <laughs> and he was like well how do I go about this and I was like well there's several ways and I I mean I, I didn't like you know I didn't want to just throw him out into the wilderness oh, and yeah. like go to a gay bathhouse or like I mean it's Miami you're gonna find someone who needs their dick sucked in yeah. Miami I mean Florida's like degenerate city so it's like it's a degenerate <laughs> state it's shaped like a dick and you will find someone who's just walking down the street who's like sure come here yeah if you ask enough people come, come back to <laughs> my house um, and then out of no, so I'm, so he put the feelers out amongst his friends Oh, yeah. and, uh, and one of his friends, <laughs> whose name was Maite, who's this like eternal Cuban party girl who's like burned out from partying. She's like well into her forties. <laughs> she knows this like gay couple and they're looking for, they were looking for like a third party Fucking to great. suck someone's dick, one of their dicks. Yeah. Because the guy apparently has a dick and it. it's like the same dick size as like a, like Comcast cable like re- remote <laughs> they sent him a picture as proof like it's really real it's really this big it's like you can tell it's big just from staring at it because yeah. it's it's like fucking knocking your knees buddy but yeah you can see the proportions so now so he started going and he would call me beforehand he'd be like i'm really nervous and i'm like oh just put your blush on and get in there you <laughs> get know? in there champ yeah so he went and first he started sucking both of them off mm-hmm. but he was really into the really big dick guy obviously because yeah. it reminded him and the guy was like more aggressive and like more hockey player-esque okay scout. so yeah so the other one was just kind of like a supporting player and then that guy just mysteriously disappeared i guess they had like a little couple powwow and was like well you can just get your dick sucked by this yeah guy. you seem to be way more into yeah, it I'm and just he there. seems to be digging you it's, more it's hot but like hey i, I don't could need go to... out and do something else yeah you know while <laughs> I could, we can go yeah i could yeah. go get a fucking mani petty i don't know what they do but yeah. um so now he's been sucking this guy's dick three times a week for six months 
<laughs> I love how he, it's like a very regimented. It's so regimented. He, li- he likes there's, pattern. There's he, almost no communication. It's like, same, same I'm available setup. 3 p.m. Okay, I'll be there. Yeah. He shows up. He's like within minutes. He's sucking his dick. Yeah. And then, and then as soon as the guy blows his load, he's out. Bye. Yeah. No, thank you. No, nothing. He yeah. said the guy is so like, and he says he now he, he like shit talks a little bit, but like not much. Like he'll be like, you like that? Faggot? Like yeah. he'll, he'll say that. And then, and then he can't really respond, but I think <laughs> he, it was like, he's mm-hmm. occupied. Yeah. Yeah. But he does this one really funny thing where he says, he'll, he'll say, uh, when he wants his ball sucked, he just goes balls. <laughs> He just goes balls. <laughs> like not even suck my balls. Yeah. Just balls. 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 You know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. Just balls. Go, balls. Yeah. And then he blows his load and he gets out of there. And I'm like, I'm like, I bet this guy is just like in love with you. Like I bet he like lays it at, um, in his bed at night and like closes his eyes and imagines like like running down the beach with you uh. holding your hand. Even though you guys don't talk, you know nothing about each other. Yeah, like, there could be this whole amorous, you know, fantasy that's what I think. happening. And David does not give a fuck. He, like, yeah, he just, likes this dynamic. He clearly. Likes it. He, loves he it. did it for like four years he with did this it for other four p- years. Yeah, and he's doing it now. This seems to be like his thing. But they've they've kind of like this little sort of switch in dynamic happened because he said that the guy who whose dick he sucked the Comcast cable dick <laughs> said am I really though like only the second dick you've ever sucked in your life and he's mm-hmm. like yeah and he's like well what did th- what was the other dick like I guess you got a little curious uh-huh. he got a little possessive uh-huh. of his <laughs> strange man the dick sucks I, I mean yeah I've only sucked one other dick but I've sucked it like it was, five it was like a master's thousand degree. times was, he got that <laughs> <laughs> along with his bachelor's degree. So when he finished school, he finished with two degrees. The other one was not put on a certificate because it did not need to be. And his dad didn't need to know that. But he got two bachelors in the span of those four years. He worked his ass off. <laughs> yeah, it sounds he like He worked it. his knees to the bone. You know, like yeah. he, he really worked hard. Um <laughs> Yeah, and he said. He said, and he told him the truth. He said the Comcast cable guy was like, "So just one other dick it can, couldn't have been bigger than mine." And he goes, "Well, actually." Oh. And he says, since then, the Comcast cable guy has yeah. been like, like shit talking him a lot more. <laughs> you like that, don't you? Like, because he's, you know, it helps the dynamic. This humiliating ego. kind yeah, of a yeah, dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Humiliation is so huge. Like all day long, I just deal with humiliation. Like yeah. men and humiliation, it's it's a big deal. Yeah. Because.